So what is the neorealist theory? Neorealism is a theory that basically says that states behave according to the structure of the international system. Uh, it's how states are organized, what the architecture of the international system looks like that largely influences how those states behave. And the key organizing principle of the international system is anarchy. And anarchy basically says that there is no higher authority above states. States are like balls on a pool table, right? They have no higher authority that sits above them. And the neo-realist or structural realist argument is that in the absence of a higher authority that can protect states if they get into trouble, what those states will do is they will compete with each other for power because power really matters for your survival. If you're a state in the international system, you want to be able to survive. Survival has to be your highest goal because, of course, if you don't survive, you can't pursue any of your other goals. But survival can be a very tricky, very tricky goal in a system where there's no higher authority that can protect you if trouble comes. So to deal with that problem, you try and make yourself as powerful as possible. You want to look like Godzilla, because if you're Godzilla in the international system, you're really powerful, it's highly unlikely that any other state will attack you. So this is the sort of basic insight of neorealism, that the structure or the architecture of the international system, again, I'm focusing mainly on anarchy here, leave states with little choice but to compete among themselves for power because the more power you have, the more likely you are to survive. Why do we need neorealist theory and which phenomena do we want to explain with it? Well, we need theories to understand how the world works. There's just no question that the world is an amazingly complicated place. And this includes international politics, of course. So for any individual, whether he or she is a policymaker or whether you're a student of international politics, what you're trying to do is make sense of the world. You're trying to figure out what are the principal forces that are driving state behavior? How can I get state A to do this? How can I get state B to do that? And to do that, you need theories. Theories are simplifications of reality. Given this complicated world out there, what you want are theories which simplify that reality and allow you to make sense of it. And what's nice about neorealism is that it is a very simple theory that people can use to help figure out how they think the world operates, how it works. And that allows people not only to understand the world, but allows them to think about what are the right or what are the wrong policies that states should pursue for their own benefit. In which field of political science is neorealism mostly used and uh, can create a great advantage in, in, in using it? Neorealism is mainly used, of course, in the subfield of international relations. And within the subfield of international relations, it tends to be employed more by people who study international security than international political economy. I do believe, nevertheless, that realism has a lot to say about political economy. But the fact is that it's people who study questions of war and peace, people who study questions about international security that mainly focus on realism. That's the domain in where, where realism has its greatest impact. It, it, it's in the international security realm. So what are the main limitations and the main critiques towards neorealism? Well, the main limitation of neorealism is that like any theory, it can't explain everything. Uh, my view is that theories, even the best theories, and I would consider neorealism to be among the best theories, can only explain about 75% of what happens in the world. 
That means that neorealism is wrong probably about 25% of the time. Now you're probably saying to yourself, why is this the case? It's actually quite simple. What we're talking about is dealing with a really complicated world, a world that's very hard to make sense of. And what we do, as I said before, is we invent theories, which are simplifications of reality that help us understand that complicated world. Well, if you're going to simplify reality and come up with a simple theory, and simple theories are the best theories, that means you're going to leave some factors on the cutting room floor. In other words, some factors that matter in international politics are not going to be incorporated into your theory because you think they are not very important. Neorealism, or structural realism, pays little attention to domestic politics. It says you don't need domestic politics to understand how the world works. It's again the structure of the system that's largely determinative. But sometimes domestic politics really matters. And that factor that you left on the cutting room floor jumps up and influences a particular set of events. And in that case, neorealism is going to fail to tell you a lot about what is going on in the world because neorealism cannot account for domestic politics. Domestic politics is left out of neorealism. It's on the cutting room floor. But that's not to say domestic politics never matters. What the neorealists are saying is it only matters sometimes, and that's not very often. So I can afford to leave it out. But this is not to deny that there will be those occasions where domestic politics matters. So neorealism, like all theories, is a simplification of reality. And when you're talking about simplifying a complicated reality, there are going to be instances where neorealism fails the test. And of course, this would be true of all theories. So why is it important that students are aware and study neorealism? Well, I think that the main reason that any student of international politics wants to understand neorealism is because it is among the most powerful theories that we have in international relations. I would argue, not surprisingly, that I think it is the most powerful theory. I think if you really want to understand how international politics works, uh, you can do no better uh, than to focus on neorealism. For example, if you're interested in the question of whether China can rise peacefully, you need a theory to answer that question because, of course, we have no facts about the future. So if we're trying to predict whether China can rise peacefully, we need a theory. And I would maintain that the best theory for capturing the essence of this question of whether China can rise peacefully is neorealism. So it is a powerful theory uh, that students should understand. Now, I want to be clear. This is not to say that every listener should think or conclude that neorealism is the best theory in the land. It may be the case that people uh, come to the conclusion that some liberal theory, like democratic peace theory, is uh, better at explaining real-world events than neorealism. I concede that point. But what I would argue is that you want to understand neorealism or structural realism because it is one of the most important theories and there are a lot of important scholars uh, who think uh, that it is among the best theories in our menu of different IR theories. So what are some key readings that you would recommend someone who's interested in neorealism? I think, actually, the best starting point is Thomas Hobbes's famous book, uh, Leviathan. Uh, I think he, in, in the first uh, part of the Leviathan, uh, Hobbes does a brilliant job of laying out the uh, basic outlines of neorealism. Of course, in the contemporary uh, literature, uh, Kenneth Waltz's book, Theory of International Politics, is considered by almost everybody to be a seminal work, and I think that would be a good book to look at. Waltz also wrote a very famous book called Man, State, and War, uh, which is well worth looking at. Um, 
And then at the risk of uh, sounding egotistical and plugging my own work, I think the book that I wrote, The Tragedy of Great Power Politics, uh, is helpful for understanding the basic logics uh, that underpin neorealism. So those would be, you know, uh, four good books, I think, to look at to get a grasp of what this realist enterprise is all about.